Good afternoon everybody, um, Kathy here from Pintail Paddocks, so I thought I'd just have a bit of a catch up. Um, one of the things that I thought I'd catch up with is that um, I felt a little bit frustrated recently because I've got a little bit behind um, and that played on my mind a little bit, so much so that then I was putting it off um, <coughs> and I'm sure that other people feel like that sometimes. So I thought that you know, I'd share that I feel like that. Um, some of the things that I wanted to get planted in earlier in April, I haven't done. Um, but as long as I get them planted, it doesn't matter what time it is because, you know, they'll still have a good go at whatever it is that's growing. Um, for me, it's my carrots should have been in by now. Um, and I should have direct sowed them. But I am going to be doing that today. And my spinach as well so I'm just going to get them in and even if I'm a month behind I'm not going to be um, you know having a go at myself or making myself feel bad because the thing is ultimately as long as um, it goes in um, and it has a good chance of growing then it's better than none at all so that's that little bit so um, you'll see a few bits that I'm going to be doing today uh, this is another one that I went to garden centre and pick this one up so um, my hubby likes the big uh, leaf plants so this one is called a musella so if anybody's got one um, and has got previous pictures of it when it's um, all um, in leaf that would be brilliant so it says a very tough form of ornamental banana grown for its paddle shaped leaves and when mature it's striking golden yellow flowers the hardiest of all the bananas it can survive below freezing temperatures full sun or shade suitable for pots um, essentially a clump forming perennial so um, as we can see here we've got clumps here now these bits here uh, are making me feel a little bit worried but there are green so um, I'll have to do a little bit of research so if anybody knows anything about those please let me know I've never planted any of these before so it'll be interesting um, and just see whether I need to leave it in that plant or move it on I'll have to do a little bit of research um, I've got some of the Fiesta sweet corn here the coloured ones they're not as sweet as the normal sweet corn but I thought I'd have a go at uh, growing some of those. I thought the grandchildren would like the colours anyway. And also you can dry them and use them dried. Um, or you can eat them, but uh, they're just not as sweet. So, uh, but I'll give them a go anyway. So I'll pop, pop some in here, putting it in here because it's a little bit deeper. I've put some um, uh, little chippings in here as well to make the drainage a little bit better. Um, I know that there are other things that you can use but I'm just using things that I've got to hand so I'll pop those in there uh, pop a little bit of compost on top and see how they go so I've mixed some of my own compost uh, with um, which one is it peat free miracle grow uh, in in here and then um, I have uh, put it through the um, grid to make it a little bit easier to work with. The seeds that I've got up here are F1 Fiesta. I'm just going to pop them in like this because I won't once they start coming up. I mean it's nice and deep so um, I know some people soak them I don't bother I just put them in give them a good water um, they're not small seeds so you can water them I will also stand them in water to make sure that they're completely soaked and then it won't take long for those seeds to um, to come on um, I will be putting them in my polytunnel to uh, bring them on a little bit so just a little bit of compost on the top and then I'll just do that I'm not going to do anything else uh, that's plastic so it needs to go in the bin and then um, I'll water that over uh, and stand in some water in my polytunnel for a couple of hours and then uh, put it out on the side and it can drain itself and also start doing uh, what it needs to do 
So now I'm going to be putting some uh, spinach in. Uh, it is perpetual spinach, so I'll be putting that in the bed and I'll just show you how I'm doing it. Um, I'll put a couple of uh, rows in and then I can thin them out and spread them across the bed. Um, it's about a third of the bed that I'm using because I've got other things to go in the other two thirds. Um, and what I've done to prepare it is I've taken out the... Um, the field beans, uh, taken the tops off, fed those to the animals um, and I have left the roots in so that the nodules um, can go into the soil um, and the nitrogen nodules can go into the soil and help to uh, add uh, properties to that. I've also put my own uh, compost on top. Um, it's very rich. It's not broken down quite as much as I would like, but it is, it's nice and rich. It's got loads of worms in there. Um, and so that will make it nice and fertile. And I'm going to put my spinach in there. So I'll show you um, doing that now. So all I'm going to do is make a drill down here. It's a bit wet and my, hat, my finger's getting a bit muddy. But just do a drill, just move it to the side, whichever. Don't always have compost nice and dry. So, and to be fair, if it's a little bit moist, it's better. So, uh, these are my seeds. So, they're perpetual spinach, it's uh, Thompson and Morgan seeds. And I'm just going to try, I'm not always very good at this, so I'm a bit heavy handed with these. I can spread them out uh, over the bed when they come through so it's not the end of the world if uh, I do have them a bit all over the place or too many or I don't tend to worry too much because otherwise you what that is um, you never do anything would you if you're worrying all the time so um, and I can be a worrier, so I try not to try not to worry too much. I'm gonna try and get these in. A few too many there. And I think I'll do three rows because uh, the animals like these as well. So that all this does is give me a guide, and I'm putting them about ten centimeters apart because they're not going to be where they're being put now. Some of them will. I'll just move some of them and leave some of them. Uh, and they can be moved. I've moved some other ones as well. So uh, even when they're older, um, I'll show you in a minute. I, I moved them uh, because I knew that uh, I would need to, to uh, revitalize the bed. Um, and I'm just putting this over. Uh, so I move them and they I'm gonna have to take off some of the lower leaves, but they're fine. They come on fine So I just leave that one there so that I know where to put my marker For the perpetual spinach and then I'll know that it comes down this way And there they are all covered up I'm nice and muddy, but uh, that, that doesn't matter does it? It can be washed off And then just water them in even though it is uh, quite damp and that's them done so these here are my spinach that I older spinach that I planted now these ones here are looking fine but these are looking a bit bedraggled so I'm going to cut off the old leaves so that then uh, the new ones can concentrate on growing um, I've also put new spinach in, which you've just seen, so I've got that coming on as well. So I just thought I'd replant it to see if it would take, and it has, so I've just got to cut those old leaves off, and then hopefully it'll keep going for a little bit longer. So I've given some of the spinach uh, a bit of a haircut, uh, so that'll help now. Um, hopefully they'll come on. If they go to seed, it doesn't matter because I've got my other ones going on. In this bed, I've got some turnip as well. Around the outside, I've got some uh, red barren onions. Um, and so now I'm gonna put two rows of carrots in here. Um, I'll go for giant red carrots. Uh, I've just gotta find the correct one. 
and then we'll go for the Paris Market Atlas one so that we've got some bigger ones and some smaller ones. Now I haven't got very many seeds but that will be enough to do a row. I will make sure I get them all out. And that is giant red carrot, real seeds. So we'll put that on here. And we will make a bit of a... Again, this is my own compost. This was off the top, so it wasn't quite as broken down as the other stuff that I've just shown you. So, uh, right, okay. So let's see if we can do this as evenly as possible. There we go. This is one done. Put this back on. Like I say, it's not the most broken down compost, but it is full of goodness, which is the most important. So we'll put that one there, and then we'll put these other ones that are a bit smaller on the end here, just make a little bit of a ridge, and then we'll put these ones in here. And one of the things I did want to do this year was to remember to mark things, which I have done, but a lot of the time, unfortunately, um, the markings have come off. Right, these are Paris Market Atlas and they're Thompson and Morgan. This time instead of real seeds, I've got a few more seeds this time. I'm just going to go and pop them in. Any that, because uh, I'll have to um, thin them down. I can always move into other beds or, or around here. And then all I'll do is water them in and then they'll be fine. This is this was a shop shop bought parsley so i'm quite glad that that's come on they don't always do that when um i have shop bought things so that's both of those done now don't let me forget to put that in there. hopefully i'll be able to see it in the future so i've got some more carrots to do so i'll move you into another bed and do those So this time I have got Nate's 2, which I'll put there. Well, that is. Then white carrots, because my grandchildren quite like the different ones. And then I've got Shantony Red uh, 2. So we'll put that one there. Do you know, I don't put plastic in my compost. I don't know where it comes from, but it does. Right, so do a line here. Best I can, this has dried out a little bit. So, so this, was a, this was one of my hotbeds as was the one that I've just put my carrots into. So there should be a bit of warmth to bring these on. Uh, on top of all of the, um, the straw and bedding I put in there, I've put cardboard and then I've put the compost on top. So um, I'll give these a good wet down afterwards. And then they should, oh gosh, I've got, there's loads of seeds in this one. Absolutely. I won't have to worry. I'm going to have to definitely thin these out. Right, that's that one done. As long as I can't see the seeds, that's all good. Right, that's that one. And then we have got, i to make sure I've got the right ones, white carrots. So this is a real seeds one. It's quite dry this one. Oh, there's no blooming plastic. I don't know where it comes from. 
think it must get blown into my compost bin or something. Right, there's lots of these as well, so I've got to try and not be too overzealous with them. But like I say, I've got some flower beds as well that I can put some of these in afterwards. There we are, and the last one. That's nicer. And this one is a Chardonnay. Chardonnay, oh, sounds like some nice wine. Maybe after having a nice afternoon. Planting some seeds. I might need to go and get a bit of that. Right, that's those done. So, all nice and quick, just make sure that I can't see any of the seeds. And that's it done. Now I'll just go and get the spray and give them a bit of a water. So I'll just give these a little bit of a spray just to make sure that the seeds make contact with the soil. Get a little bit of that warmth coming up through and hopefully germination should be quite quick. The temperatures are quite warm down here at the moment, uh, down in the south, down in Cornwall. Um, so it shouldn't take long for those to germinate. Uh, before anybody says as well, I know that we have a hose pipe band down here, but I have a borehole, so uh, thankfully I am excluded. I use a watering can most of the time, but sometimes it just makes it easier. Um, I've got mobility issues, so uh, sometimes rather than walking far further or carrying heavy things, um, it's just easier for me to just do it this way. The greenhouse I try and heat the water up, fill the water up um, from either uh, collected water or um, borehole water, leave it in there so that then um, it gets up to the right temperature.